<laughs> I met this really nice looking woman and <laughs> 1995. She said to me, uh, what do you do? And I told her I'm an artist. And that's what I've done. I've taught art uh, for um, on 35 years and also building trades. <clears throat> So I described what I did and what kind of art I did. She said, you know, you're going to like Rita Steiner. Have you heard of him? I said, no. Well, he has a philosophy that you would be interested in because I can see your, your work. And I said, no, I'm not interested in any philosophies. I've already had enough. I've, you know, I've found my direction. I know where I'm going. Well, um, the problem that I had was that I liked her. <laughs> so um, she started sending me these books, Philosophy of Freedom, and Theosophy and well, I'll call you and then we'll talk about the first chapter. Mm -hmm. You know, so okay, so I started to read it, you know, and I started to like it. So she invited me to the first English conference at the Gurthiana. So I went there, and I think it was 1998, and I went there and I saw this model. Well, this is the real <laughs> building, of course, it's burnt down. But I saw a model of this that was big, I mean like 12 feet high. And what I really liked were these sculptures up here. This, this is the uh, Saturn capital um, that sits on this column. And uh, I really liked it. And I, I realized that all of those were based on seven. And that the columns were based on five. And I thought, you know, um, and of course, there's, there's seven seals. Uh, it's seven all through his work. So uh, being a sculptor, I said, oh, I'm going to find the sculpture around here. I know there's going to be a seven-sided sculpture. So I went through everything I could get into and found nothing. So um, th the reason is, is because, see, this is the, the first thing I saw was this, this capital. And of course, this capital is based on seven. Okay, but that's not sculpture. Uh, it's a relief. So, uh, but you know, it had to be this way because it held up the building. Um, I wanted to make this okay three-dimensionally. So, um, at the end of the conference, I left, and uh, I never saw a girl again. But um, two years later. I always had this in mind, I want to make a seven-sided form. So um, I went to Real Standard College and took a class there, and in the class there was this Patricia Dixon. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thanks a lot. I was quicker than him, you know. So. And, <laughs> and so uh, she taught platonic forms, solids. And the, I, pu I put them up here. These are platonic solids. And she taught about these, and that stirred me in. I wanted to make the seven because I saw this. I saw this was six, you know, uh, well, oh, this is eight, and this is four. I thought, ah, the seven, I'll be able to find out the seven. So um, no one knew anything about seven. No one. And so I started to go into the books because there wasn't anybody who knew about it. And I went into the books, and they said, seven cannot be produced three dimensionally because of gaps. And then what's that, you know? So they're telling me that the seven is produced two-dimensionally, like a plane with the etheric, but it never goes into the third dimension. It's not used in nature. Well, uh, that didn't discourage me. I don't care. So, um, so what I did was I started studying these forms. But what I want to show you is uh, a lot of geometry, because all of this relates to the bell. And so I, I think it's important that I show you as much as I can because um, then you'll I'll know the significance of the bell that will be here. Uh, of course, everything is, you know, based on a compass. Sacred geometry only has a compass, a straight edge without any divisions, and a pencil. So everything you see here was made with a compass and a pencil and a straight edge. Everything. So, uh, of course, the compass makes the periphery and, of course, has the center. Okay, so a compass encompasses or it divides. You know, you can take a compass and divide things. So if you take this center and you take it out the periphery, okay, now you have the center and the periphery in balance. And this is what the heart wants. 
Now, if I draw this on the board, should we turn the lights on or, uh, because that still probably is pretty good, isn't it, even with the lights on? I don't know if it is or not. Yeah, you can still see it. So, um, I, I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw a circle here and then the center is here and then I'm going to take the, the center of this and move it over here and then I'm going to draw another circle. Okay, and that's what I just showed you, right? What's so important about that is that this distance right here is extremely important because that's the middle of the balance. Um, they call it the vesica Pisces. Uh, what's so interesting about it is that if you go across the centers, you, know, you have a cross. And of course, this is one. If this is one, this distance is root three. The square root of three, which is uh, 1.732, and I could go across, you know, over there across the plaza and keep going with numbers because there's no end. And they've gone two million digits on the computers and still not come up with a zero. So I just do it perfect. I didn't have to measure a thing. It's perfect. This will make, a, if this is one square mile, this is three square miles. Okay, so interesting is if I take this point here and draw to these connections like this, I get two equilateral triangles. Perfect. They're perfect. And you believe that? It's perfect. No rulers. All right, so what I want to show you here is how that looks. If I take this tube here and I put this across the center, I use Q-tips in my research uh, because it's cheap and then I use uh, rubber cement and I can make anything with this and it, I can get 500 of these for like two pounds and of some rubber cement and I dip them in the rubber cement and they're great because I can make anything, you know, they, they're not holding too good because in the airplane the rubber cement freezes but uh, normally, you know, it sticks really good. So, if I take this, I can do this. If I take this like this, I can show you to prove that that particular red tube is root three. And I can do that if I make equilateral <coughs> triangles. So, maybe somebody could help me with, with hold that corner there maybe. Yeah, I, I, just so that you can see that uh, I'm not lying. <laughs> All right, here we go. So you hold the top. Okay, I'll hold the bottom. Now you can see there's two equilateral triangles. Okay, does everybody see that? Kind of? Okay, let go. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there they are. So we know that that red line is root three. All right, so I'm going to put that here. Two times root three. What's that? Double root three. Um, well, if this is one, this has to be root three. No. Equal triangle. It's one. That's one. That's two. And root three is down, halfway down. Um, yes, it is if we just consider this part. But if we consider both, it's doubled. For instance, I can double this, can't I? I can double this like this, can't I? Now this is root three. So it expands and expands and contracts and contracts. But it's based on a simple geometry because how simple it is. It's unbelievably how simple. Okay, so based on that, uh, I started to work on these forms. Now what I was questioning about these forms is they were platonic solids. And to me, they were never solid. I never, uh, they looked to me transparent. I could see in them. So I never considered them solid. And so when I started to study them, really new things started to come to me. Okay, so this is the first one that comes in. And basically it comes in uh, by like I just showed you here. You have one line. That's a point. That's no dimension. And if I have a series of points, it makes a line. Okay, so if I put two of these together, 
it's still a line. If I put three of them together, it makes a plane. That's a leaf. That's the first shape that comes in through nature, is a triangle. So what I decided to do is to try to find out what was going on here. To make this into a tetrahedron, all I had to do was, see if I have, I'll show you my procedure. My procedure was to take and put three legs on the triangle that I produced. So I made a three-legged table like that. So these, these are trying to find points. They're trying to get together. So you just connect this and this, and there's the first form, three-dimensional form. This is known as fire. This is known as warmth. This is the choleric. <coughs> now, that's coming from Rudolf Steiner. And you know, he used these things, and that's why it's important for you to look at. Because you can use them too, not only, not only just making sculptures, but also in, in your social relationships or your business. Uh, of course, and, and this is the Saturn, and this is, this is uh, fire, and this is also the warmth ether. Uh, this is the octahedron, this is the sanguine. Okay, this is Steiner's work. It's the kidney. This is the heart. This is the kidney, this is sanguine, this is the light ether. Okay. So you have warmth ether, the next one is light ether. The next, the next ether is the tone ether. And this is an icosahedron. And the icosahedron is the pragmatic, it's the moon, and it's water. Now I don't expect you to remember all this, but I just want you to see that there is a process here that these, these forms are really important. And the last one we come to is a hexahedron, which is a cube. All right, and the cube is what, the cube is uh, uh, the life ether. And we have life ether, tone ether, um, air, uh, 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 light ether, and warmth ether. Okay, this is the lungs. These are organs. Okay. Uh, so I studied them this way, and I wanted to figure out, well, where does the seven come into this? So they said this was everything that is fire, which is consuming everything. So if I take fire and I put it under a cube, okay, a solid, this is a solid, it turns into a water, a liquid, and then it turns into gas, Okay, it gets rare and rare, and then finally into a flame. So you can see how the process here is based on natural process here. Okay, so this one is supposed to be transforming everything. The octahedron is supposed to be reversing. This is everything that reverses. This is everything that changes, and this is everything that's different. Okay, so I could not believe how, what is there a possibility, how is that, how is that, Reversing and, and how is this changing? You know, I want to know this. So I know the books don't tell me. They don't tell you these things. They just tell you that's what it is. Like uh, Kepler, he draws on here. He draws a, a shovel and a, a hoe, and and on this one here, he draws a fish and you know and a turtle, a, a sea turtle. On this one, he puts birds all over here. And this one here, he puts flames. You know, little flames with wood. Well, that's not enough. So uh, what I decided to do is to go to the next one. So I took my procedure of this, and what I did was I made four this time. Remember I made three here? Because I don't know this sequence here. I mean, what makes him think, or anybody thinks that this is next, and this is next, and that's the last one? What, where is that coming from? It's not in the books. So what I did is I decided that uh, I would take Instead of three, I would take four, use the same process, bring it together, and see if that's a platonic form. Um, you can see that um, this little guy, the tetrahedron, has the characteristics. As if you put a sphere in the middle of it, all it takes is the faces touch.